my, my view is that we should do look at every bit of legislation that's been passed since 2008, really. Uh, and go through it. And, so, so I think um, he'll probably need a little bit more specifics than that, won't he? I, yeah, well, I've put, well maybe. But, so let's help um, him out with I, some specifics. <laughs> an example for you would be, say, the energy calculation on washing machines. Yes. Um, it's not fit for purpose. It's well, a talk, very long, talk, talk, long... us, talk us through it. I mean, to, to be fair, ev- everything that's been passed since 2008, and I say, give me the highlights, and you say energy on washing machines. I mean, there's thousands, but but this is just an example. It's the way they're written, you know. Yes. Um, are you in the washing? Are you are you in the washing machine business? No, I'm not. It's an example that I was challenged by a friend to give this answer to you, you know that you're asking as well, and so I had to look up and read some European legislation. But you, you had to I look it up know. after you'd said that it was a good idea. No, um, I'll give you one that I work in. So I work in construction. No, so. can we just finish off the washing machine stuff first? Okay. Because yeah, I haven't heard it from anybody in the industry. Okay, okay. An objection to it. So what is the problem? Well, my objection to that is that, or the objection to that that I've got is the calculation they have for it is very prescriptive. Yes. And it's easy to fudge these calculations. Okay. It's a very long calculation. It's set in in, uh, in one formula. Is is this... You can play with the formula. is, Is this a variation on the hairdryer hoover? story yes it's, a, it's okay that kind of thing, yeah. so that kind i mean of i kind of when i said don't ring me and talk about hair dryers or hoovers <laughs> you okay, pa- parenthetically we could have included washing machines unless you're in the industry so i mean the question was how is it going to improve your life or mine so let's let's let do me, it from that angle let me pick one that, that, no let's uh, do it from that angle how's it going to improve your life or mine well, I'll tell you from a business point of view yes. uh, how it makes the business better. On, on, um, but, the, but you're not in the washing okay, machine yes. business, are you? No, but I could tell you about something that I am involved in. So well, then why are we talking that, about washing so. machines? Well, because that's one as well. That, and you didn't want to talk about it. So no, I, I do. I want you to tell me how changing this regulation is going to make your life or my life better. Well, the whole economy works better if the regulations are well written and they're practical. Most of the European regulations are very unpractical and... and uh, and over, over well, the top I mean, I, I, and, uh, forgive me, but bureaucracy. but that should make it really, really easy for you to answer my questions. Then, so how how is my life going to be improved by reviewing washing machine legislation? Well, just okay. So that maybe not directly your life. Well, okay, your life then. Um. So, so if if the, if everyone's working very inefficiently, I mean, more, there's been less money for everybody. I'm just saying that the, the rules that the European Union have right. right. Yes, and, and I'm asking you to prove it, I suppose, politely. Okay, so, for example, I'll give you a better example. Cause, um, something well, that, you, that was supposed to be your best. No, it wasn't. It was just an example, and there's oh. hundreds of thousands of examples. I think yeah, and, and so when you say there's situation. hundreds and thousands, and I say give me one, I think the presumption is that you'll reach for a strong one. Yeah, and I can give you another... Like, well, you keep telling okay, well, me that, like, well, it's not with the area of industry I work in. Which no, no, like, I just so said, how will it improve our lives, work. washing machines? And you don't know, which is fine. I don't know either. So I, I probably wouldn't have phoned you live on the radio to say it, but here we are. So let's move on to something else. The problem with the European Union is the bureaucracy it creates. No, I've heard all of this, but that's not what Sajid Javid is asking. He's asking which bureaucr- bureaucracy, bits of this bureaucracy, you'd like to get rid of. So so we, we, we can't put washing machines on the list. I think we both agreed on that, because you haven't got a clue how it would improve anything. So yeah, what what are we going to put? What are we going to put on the list? So, so another thing we're involved in recently is BATS and BATS surveys and all that kind of but stuff. But BATS? Yeah. So how so, is that going to improve your life or mine? So, well, basically, if... So, for example, that's as in as in the flying the price, mammals that sleep upside the price, down. The price of houses, okay? You're you're concerned about the price of houses. So we're not talking about houses, bats anymore. Yeah, we are. But you have to let me finish. Oh, sorry. If 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 um if you had more houses on the market, so that user bills, then the price of houses would be lower, and there'd be more houses available for everybody. So one of the things that holds back development uh, on building sites yeah. is the fact that you have to go through ridiculous procedures for checking for bats and protecting the bat and you can't do things that would actually prevent the bat coming in. you can't do okay can't so I, i'm going to put i'm going to put i'm going to put that down so if, if we tell saji javid we want less protections for bats not protection but just relevant protections because so we don't want bat, oh okay so, so right so what, what which bit of the current legislation would you change first do you think with regard to the bats 
well, for that, it's, you just have, you've got to go through it. I mean, the American legislation is pretty good. It's better, much better quality than ours yes. than the European one. So I would start with something like the American legislation. So what are the big differences? What are the big differences there? I'm not an Amer- I'm not an expert on American. I just know I've talked to the guys. So the washing machines, but you can't tell it. me why, and bats, but you can't tell me why. Is there anything that you do understand that you could put on this list? Well, I do. I mean, I work on the practical end of these things, so I'm not a lawyer. But you, you, all these things need to be drafted by lawyers. But they need to be done. Yes, no, 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 no. But you can't say that they need to be drafted by lawyers until you've explained why. And all you've done so far is say the words washing machines and bats. So, so what is the problem at the moment with the current legislation in ways that everybody would understand? And that's why, in many ways, it's good that. That you're not involved in the washing machine industry or indeed in bat surveys because you, you've got an understanding of it and, and you can just share it with us in layman's terms, can't you? So in, in bat surveys, basically for you've got to protect the bats, which is a reasonable thing to do, and I agree with that. Right, so but which bit don't you agree with then? What, the way the legislation's written is that yes. every bat, whether it needs to be protected or not... I'm going to put you out. I'm going to put you out your misery now, much. Tim, I think. I, I mean, with, with the greatest of respect, um, I, 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 for one wonderful moment, I thought that you were having a bit of fun and joking around, but, oh, my God, you're serious. Anne's in Berkhamstead. Anne, what are you most looking forward to? Um, it's the Working Time Directive. So there are companies and organisations all over this land yes. who have to record that people work on average, 48 hours or less over a 13-week period. Yes. It's costing us all a fortune to do that, to uh, record it. Right. And we're all sidestepping it because we either belong to other organisations so we can get our hours up, or we just ignore the whole thing. And actually, the whole legislation is a farce. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to dig down into it a little bit further. I, I, and the world may have changed since I signed a, an exemption to the Working Time Directive w- when I was a newspaper journalist. So, so what is it that you want to be able to do that you can't currently do? I want to be able to work two hours or 100 hours, and that's my choice and not legislation. It's, and who, it's who is currently stopping you? From doing that, um, the, well, the European uh, legislation on uh, you know on the working time directive. But is I know lots of people company. putting in loads and lo- most ob- ob- often lorry drivers, yes. oddly. So, so what is it that yes. you do? What line of work are you in? Well, um, I'm in all sorts of lines of work. I'm I'm a retired um, ex-director from the council. And you want to and be free to work a hundred hours a week doing what? Well, um, anything I want to do. I, yes, want to be I, free. I know, but and you've I, retired. Do... So, in terms of what what would you want to be doing with those hundred hours? So, so one of the things month. that I do is recovery management. So, when an organisation is failing, yes, and one of the things that it needs is manpower and my effort. And um, yes, but what, I suppose I what I mean is, when you hit forty nine hours, who is it that comes around and locks you in a box? Uh, nobody at all at the moment until right. I do that more than 48 hours a week over a 13-week period. Yeah, and then who so turns up and tells you off? Because I know loads of people that are doing that. Yeah, yeah, there are lots of people who are doing it. But if you wanted... So, for example, if I'm in the care industry... I think I prefer the bat. Body, so yeah. I'm in the care... No, it's nothing to do with bats. I'm in the care it's industry. Batty. And I have And I have some people with some really complex challenging behaviour, yes. and I need to increase my staffing levels considerably, and yes. somebody will say, I'm sorry, but I'm over my 48, 48 hours. Yes. And actually, that's not acceptable. Oh, well, no, hang on, and you've you changed know. your tune now. So what you're saying is that you want people to be forced to work more than 48 hours, not to have no, the... I know, no, I want to be able for people to say... But what if they don't want yes, to work more I'm than happy, 48 I'm hours? I'm happy to put the hours in, but I can't at the moment. Well, no, they can I'm at the either. moment. We've just established and, and that. And the other thing is the bureaucracy, the record so I have staff sitting there. Well, you did have before recording. you retired. Yes. Yes. And but they're doing it now. Yes. People just sit. Well, they're keeping a record of how many hours they've worked. Uh, how many hours people have worked? Yes. So and if, if you if don't keep wrong, that record, how would you know how much to pay them? Well, the, the point is that they're actually not just seeing how many hours they're working, right. but on average, if they're going over the forty-eight hour week. So this yes. week I might do fifty-six. And next Just because that's a to... protection for workers, in, in, in that, that, that no employer has the right to order you to work more than 48 hours a week, but you but are perfectly... Also, but no, hang on, I need I to finish this, because right one of us doesn't understand it. <laughs> yes, you do. You have the right to do whatever you want. Your employer doesn't have the right to order you to do more than you want to. No, and, and they've taken the 48 they've taken 48 hours as the cutoff point but anyway, yes. if you were suddenly allowed to work 100 hours a week, talk us through what you do with them, briefly. 
Well, I, in my previous role, I, I probably did 16 hours a day, five days a week. Well, and you didn't get arrested? And no, I didn't get arrested. Well, did, was this prior to our European nobody, Union nobody. membership? This was prior to 2003, was it? Yes. It was. So, so uh, the point Do, is that yes. when I needed to put the hours in, I could. And yes. then when I needed to go off for coffee because of stress levels, I could. Okay, and, and now you can't. Uh, that's just not true, but... Have a wonderful day. Paul's in Chelsea. Paul, what are you going to put on my list? Hello, Joan. Please, oh. please go easy with me, mate. <laughs> um, I would ask Sajid Javid to bring back the death penalty. What, in the budget? <laughs> no, on this list of European rules. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, it, it is a budgetary requirement, but I suppose, given that the bats and the washing machines and the working time directive hasn't gone very well, you, you, you want to bring back the death penalty? Personally, yeah. Because I, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, James, your knowledge is probably far superior to mine on this. But I'm sure the, it's the Europeans that don't allow us to hang when, people. When, when did we abolish it? I think it was caught, wasn't it under Tony to, under Tony Blair's government. The last hanging, the last working gallows got taken out. The, the death penalty was abolished under Tony Blair's government. No, no. Well, the so EU, no, that's not what I asked. When did we no, when did we abolish the death penalty? In the sixties. And when did we join the European Union? 73? Yeah. Yeah, but it was a very different world, James. We didn't have the same level as, of terrorism as we do today, vile crime. I know, it's the suicide bombers are the worst, aren't they? No, I'm not talking about suicide bombers, well, I'm talking about the ones that anyone got shot that kills policemen. And, and London Bridge. Yeah, and so who, who there, would be James, top of the list? In my mouth, I rang up with a, a legitimate point and... I, and here you are it making down. it, I love it. I, why are you getting no, so... Yeah. Why, why are you being such a snowflake? <laughs> because... You so who would you put? Who would you? There. Who would you kill first? Which man? Who would I kill who, first? Who do you, who's the best? Like Rosemary West. I think she's dead, last, isn't she? Okay, there we go. Have a good day, James. <laughs> Self awareness, eh? It's not always pretty. Sorry, Sajid. Still sort of struggling a bit on this one, mate. But we'll we'll, we'll hang in there. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. James is in Newcastle, for example. James, what have you got? Uh, I've got. Uh, regulation on things like bananas and food that goes to waste because it's substandard in the EU's eyes. So not really, well, it's a budgetary issue, I don't know, but I think it's So, so, so what happens to the food at the moment? Well, it's wasted. If, no, it's, if a banana's not the right shape, then it's... You, no, you're joking you know. me. No, I'm serious. No, you're not. I am, because... You, you've rung in to talk about sell. bendy bananas. <laughs> yeah, well, it's better than bats and whatever else we've had, is it not? Well, no. It's actually I worse, because I hadn't heard food, about bats food. and washing machines before, but the bananas no. line has been rubbished from pillar to post for the last 20 years. Well, food wastage in general is not something that it should be... Well, that's be the bit I don't understand. Food, so you, you think that bananas that don't measure up to a certain standard all get thrown away into well, a big I think bin? They're, they're not sold, or, you know, carrots that are a strange shape aren't sold in the same packets as the ones that are... They are in other European you know, countries. Long. They are in Greece and France. And, and well, I think things are improving because they've started selling them, but they sold them as a, like a separate section of wonky vegetables that, that where they had could always to be do, mixed in together. That had nothing to do with EU membership. There is an EU regulation on bananas. And I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. It's a real, it's a real life thing. Yeah. Mind how you go, mate. All right. Just stay away from sharp things. 